Welcome back to Newsbeat. President Barack Obama is moving to lift restrictions on federal funding for embryonic stem cell research. The move would reverse an order put in place by former President Bush back in 2001. In Washington, Sandra Endo gives us details behind Obama's plan. President Barack Obama believes a possible breakthrough in scientific discovery could be found in embryonic stem cell research. If we are going to discard those embryos and we know that there is potential research that could lead to curing debilitating diseases, Alzheimer's, Lou Gehrig's disease, then I think that we uh, should, in a careful way, go ahead and pursue that research. Today the president plans to sign an executive order to restore federal funding for embryonic stem cell research, allowing scientists to apply for government grants for their studies. It would lift his predecessor's limits on federally funded research originally set back in 2001. Destroying human life in the hopes of saving human life is not ethical. Critics oppose the research on moral grounds since it involves destroying human embryos. They suggest using stem cells from adult bone marrow, the skin or placenta to possibly find cures for diseases and paralysis. Frankly, federal funding of embryonic stem cell research can bring on uh, embryo harvesting, uh, perhaps even human cloning that occurs. We don't want that. That shouldn't be done. That's wrong. But supporters of the president's move say they too have the moral ground. My religion teaches me to heal the sick, and God gave us this intelligence to find cures for the sick. The president's executive order calls on National Institutes of Health to create guidelines on federal funding for the research within 120 days. In Washington, I'm Sandra Endo. President Obama acknowledged that there is strong opposition to this and that people are conflicted by the issue, but he says sound science shouldn't be affected by politics or ideology. The high rate of childhood obesity in the U.S. has prompted some pediatricians to start screening kids for high cholesterol. Reporter Judy Fortin takes a closer look at the warning signs. Cholesterol tests aren't just for adults. Take a deep breath and blow. Maddie Zachs is only nine and she's already been tested twice because of a family history of heart Very disease. Good. We are waiting for the results of your labs. Children who would be the most concerning are those who are already overweight or obese or if they have a family history of early heart disease. If a child's cholesterol is high, what do you do about it? Doctors point to lifestyle changes such as daily exercise and eating a healthy diet. As a last resort, a small percentage of children might be prescribed a cholesterol-lowering drug called a statin. Putting a, a, a child or even a teenager on a statin is, is a, a major step because that, that individual may then require statin therapy uh, for the rest of their life. Something Maddie doesn't have to worry about after getting some good okay. news. Your total cholesterol is awesome. It is 148. Is we that want it. average? It's really good. It's better than average. You're a superstar. For today's Health Minute, I'm Judy Fortin. Limiting TV and computer time are two more ways to lose weight and in turn lower your cholesterol. In 2008, Louisiana ranked as the fourth most obese state in the country. Alexandra Cranford joins us now with weather and a cooler forecast for the rest of the week. Yeah, it looks like it'll uh, cool down a little bit. We may also see some rain coming up in the next few days. I'll tell you more coming up next right here on Newsbeat. Welcome back to Newsbeat. I'm Alexandra Cranford. Well, we've had a pretty wa uh, warm run here for the past week or so here in Baton Rouge. Yesterday was the warmest day of the year so far with a high here in Baton Rouge at 84 degrees. The record was at 89 degrees. So the temperatures have been unseasonably high and today is the same. Check out these high temps around the area. Lafayette is just topping out at 80 degrees. You can see New Orleans and Shreveport up to a, a degree higher. And we stayed so warm these past few days because we were sitting right underneath an upper atmosphere ridge. And you can see it right here. It's slowly moving to the east. It's keeping uh, down below it. It's keeping that air pressure high, those temperatures high and it's bringing rain to parts of the Midwest. So as it slowly shifts eastward over the coming day or two, we'll get that cool front moving over us and we'll see some of that rain shift to our area. So by Thursday, we'll see that front come through and that rain as well. And we could sure use some of that rain. Our average rainfall totals are just four to seven inches 
less than half of the normal average for this time of year. Our high today climbed to a couple of degrees above 80. We also got a pretty strong breeze coming out of the Gulf, slightly higher humidity also, so it's warm and breezy out there this afternoon with a good mix of sun and clouds overhead. This evening temperatures will drop into the 60s and will hit our overnight low right just above 60 degrees. We'll keep that south breeze and we'll get mostly cloudy skies along with some dense fog. Keep a lookout for that showing up after midnight. And watch out for that fog on your morning drive to work. That fog will linger about until about 8 a.m. tomorrow. The high will warm up to 80 degrees again. We'll get mostly cloudy skies, and tomorrow afternoon we may get some spotty showers. So it'll be another warm day, but it'll be the last warm day this week. Let's check out that five-day forecast. Look at those temperatures dropping off on Thursday. Highs will climb just into the mid-60s each day after that, as that ridge moves on eastward and that cold front reaches us. There's a pretty good chance for rain Thursday. Also, Friday and both weekend days for Saturday and Sunday, it looks like we've got up to a 60% chance of seeing some showers. So the bad news is there's a chance you'll get wet if you're going outdoors this weekend, and Saturday's St. Patrick's Day Parade may face some showers. The good news is those showers will bring us that much-needed moisture and get our rainfall totals right back on track. And that's weather for today. Hobie's got the updates on this week's sports. Thanks, Alex. Coming up in sports, the basketball team lost two games over the past week, so how did it affect their poll ranking? And the baseball team took on Illinois in a weekend series. We'll give you a recap when we come back. Stay tuned. You're watching Newsbeat. Welcome back to Newsbeat, everybody. Well, after a strong 9-0 opening to the regular season, the LSU baseball team lost their first two games, as well as their number one ranking to the Illinois Fighting Illini. On Friday, the Tigers lost their first game of the season to the Illini by a score of 3-1. However, on Saturday, the Tigers came out swinging and scoring en route to a 22-10 victory to tie up the weekend series. But when it came down to the rubber match on Sunday, the Illini took Game 3 and the series away from the Tigers as Illinois won again Sunday 6-2. The fourth-ranked Tigers will now head over to Hammond to take on Southeastern tonight at 6. Well, the LSU basketball team got a few honors today with Trent Johnson announced as SEC Coach of the Year and Marcus Thornton selected as SEC Player of the Year. But as a team, the Tigers fell down in the AP poll from 12 to 20. After going 14-1 in the SEC, the Tigers lost two straight SEC games over the past week against Vanderbilt Wednesday and Auburn on Saturday. The Tigers will now head into the SEC tournament with the number one seed and a bye in the first round. The Tigers will either be taking on Kentucky or Ole Miss on Friday at noon in Tampa, Florida. And finally, another LSU team made a huge jump in the polls as the LSU gymnastics team vaulted from 11th to 6th in only one week. The ladies of the matter 12 and 2 on the season and posted their second highest score of the season with a 197.150 against North Carolina State. Ahead of LSU in the poll are three SEC teams, first ranked Georgia, fourth ranked Alabama and fifth ranked Florida. The ladies will now have their final regular season meet of the season as they head on over to Shreveport to take on Centenary. Well, that'll do it for today in sports. We now kick it over to Lance Frank with entertainment. Coming up in entertainment, this comic book sensation took the box office by storm over the weekend and still stressed out for midterms. The music in this movie might be the cure for your studying blues. <laughs> 